everybody, I'm Dr. Ross. I'm at the Heart Rhythm Society Conference, and I have the pleasure of talking with Dr. John Day, who is an electrophysiologist at Intermountain Health in Salt Lake City, Utah. Dr. Day, thank you for being here. Oh, thank you so I. much for uh, thank, thank you for talking taking a few, with me today. Yeah, yeah. I really appreciate you taking a few minutes out of your time to talk with us and be interviewed for the website. Absolutely. So I wanted to talk to you about how you approach new patients when you see them, okay? When you get a new consultation for a patient who has AFib, how do you counsel them? How do you know when our people are better for you know, lifestyle modifications versus diet? Or when is a procedure like an ablation really a best next option for them? You know, I, in our approach, the first thing and probably the most important thing is lifestyle optimization. Optimizing their biomarkers, optimizing lifestyle. By that we mean, you know, focusing on nutrition, getting the weight down, mm -hmm. exercising daily, mm -hmm. embracing the stress, mm -hmm. you know, optimizing sleep. And I find that if people can do that, and you've probably seen the same thing in your yes. practice, that a large percentage of them can put their AFib into remission or at least significantly decrease that burden. And so that's, that's, the, that's the best goal. And the good news is even if it doesn't work, then whatever therapy we may offer, whether it be ablation, et cetera, we get tremendous success from it. And so that's really where it's at. And, and not only does the AFib go away, but the diabetes, the hypertension, yes, exactly. and their acid reflux, mm -hmm. the anxiety, whatever else, they seem to go away as well. And, you know, with the last guideline update for AFib, there's a lot of emphasis on weight loss and how weight loss can really help improve AFib symptoms. But patients a lot of times want a guide. They want to know what can they eat, what they, can they not eat, what diets are good. Is, is keto diet good? Is paleo diet good? You know, they want a nice guide of what to do. And so how do you counsel the patient? Are there certain, would you say, just weight loss important? Are there certain foods that are important, foods to avoid that are important? Absolutely. Unfortunately, I, I wish we had more data yes. in it. There are some data that the Mediterranean diet yes. can be helpful for atrial fibrillation. And, and as you know, the Mediterranean diet isn't an all-you-can-eat pizza and yes. pasta, yes. Uh -huh. but rather focus plant-based, mm -hmm. some fish, olive oil, etc. Mm -hmm. But I think the main thing with my patients is try to focus on the basics. Mm -hmm. One, I, I tell them whatever vegetables you're eating, triple them. Yes. Just triple them. Um, and hopefully it's not zero. Hopefully they've got something there uh -huh. to triple. Uh, sugar, processed carbohydrates, uh, flour, and it's not because of the gluten, because flour really acts, behaves like sugar in the body. Right. And, and as everyone, at least most of mm -hmm. people that are more health conscientious know, the flour will bump your, even whole wheat, mm -hmm. bread will bump your yeah. glucose more than a Snickers bar. Mm -hmm. Now, not that I'm advocating Snickers bars, but triple the vegetables, get rid of sugar, mm -hmm processed carbohydrates, flour, mm -hmm. if they can just do that, usually the weight takes care of itself. Right. Now when it comes to lifestyle modifications and changing diet, it's a bit of a long-term strategy. I right. mean obviously weight doesn't come off in the next week or two, no. you know. But when it comes to AFib symptoms, let's say you have a patient and they say, you know what, I'm going to change my life. I'm avoiding sugar, all the things that you just talked about. Yeah. Have you seen any cases where literally the AFib stopped? right away or does it still take a couple of months to see any benefit from the AFib right. standpoint? Well usually they start feeling better immediately. Now they may go through a sugar withdrawal, mm -hmm. uh, a sugar detox, yes. but once they get through that detox phase, generally they start feeling better. The weight comes off, their knees stop hurting, mm -hmm. they find their blood pressure now is under much better control, they're not snoring at mm -hmm. night, right. and the AFib just day by day mm -hmm. gets better. It's not immediately overnight but it does get better do you ever find that in the short term until that process kind of takes the place yeah. that you have to be more aggressive with medical therapy like uh, you know antiarrhythmic or other types of medications or even procedure just as a quick short-term right. solution you know for people who are in and out of the hospital and yeah. lifestyle modifications it may take a little while to see an effect it may and sometimes we do have to use a short-term antiarrhythmic um, but given the toxicities of that and and most people who are willing to make lifestyle changes are usually not the same people who want to take drugs for yes. the rest of their lives. Yes, yes. But for a short term period, sometimes we need it. Yeah. And and then as we talked about, sometimes it, they don't get that cure. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it puts it into remission for five years, ten years, and then at a future date we do that ablation. Yeah. But if they're maintaining that lifestyle, those are the people that our ablations, we get tremendous success with. Yeah, and, and obviously, as we just talked about lifestyle, I always tell people, my patients, there's short-term plans and there's long-term plans. Exactly. And the diet, 
the food you eat, weight management, comorbidity about you know right. management Absolutely. is essential for your long term sure. success. Whether that yep. be just purely lifestyle modification, medication, right. procedures, right. everything works better with better lifestyle. It does. Now you're very busy in the internet world. You've got your own website yep. and your previous book. You want to tell people a little bit yeah, about Yeah, it's yourself? called The Longevity Plan. And that really came about with my own health transformation. Mm -hmm. You know, I hit my mid-40s yeah. and one by one I'm getting all these medical problems, mm -hmm. autoimmune disease, mm -hmm. eosinophilic esophagitis, mm -hmm. hypertensive, overweight. And I really struggled. And for me, it was difficult even getting through mm -hmm. the day doing procedures, yeah. wondering if I'm going to have to take it, go on disability and yeah. early retirement. And so... For me, it was really a search, and uh, for people who follow me know that I speak fluent Chinese, mm -hmm. and through one of these trips to China, speaking on behalf of a medical society, introduced to this village in China uh, in the longevity belt, where they have some of the longest life expectancies mm -hmm. in the world, more centenarians mm -hmm. than anywhere else, mm -hmm. and they don't have all these chronic medical problems that we have in the West. Yeah. And in hearing that, at first I didn't believe it, but yeah. it's like, I've got to see. Yeah. And through that experience and seeing and being in this village in this part of China with the highest percentage of centenarians in the world, deconstructing, what is their secret sauce, doing mm -hmm. genetic studies, all these others, we came to realize it wasn't the genes, it wasn't something in the water. Yeah. And it was adherence to this healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And through this, sharing it with my patients, so many of my atrial fibrillation patients were able to get them off drugs mm -hmm. or Perhaps a previous ablation wasn't effective. We were able to then find find relief for them by coupling lifestyle optimization with ablation. And so really this book represents what we found, kind of the, the secret sauce. And it did well. It briefly had bestseller status. We won a bunch of book awards. But it's something I recommend for my patients because it, if you want to beat AFib, everything you need to know is there in that book. Well, I'm going to make sure, we have, please check it out, The Longevity Plan by Dr. John Day. Yeah. Dr. Dave, thank you for taking a few minutes oh, out of your time so to much. interview. I appreciate Absolutely. it a lot. All right, thank thanks. You.